During the dawn of the jet age, one of the biggest problems plaguing the newly developed planes of the time was that jet engines had a serious problem with lag. The top speeds of the aircraft were very high, but their rates of acceleration were sometimes pitiful. They needed long runways for takeoffs and when landing. Early jet pilots had to be very mindful of their speeds. If they came in too slow and were edging on stalling, the early jet engines could not be relied upon to provide acceleration quickly enough to increase speed and prevent a deadly stall. The turbine engineers of the time were in a constant hunt to find the instant power surge that propeller planes could provide. It was a quest to find balance, to find the top speed performance of a jet engine with the instant on and off power control that propeller planes provided. This pursuit led to the creation of one of the most insane aircraft ever built. The project began with the idea to investigate new propeller designs for the Air Force Propeller Laboratory at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. They wanted to test the concept of a supersonic propeller, not a supersonic airplane, just a propeller that could spin at speeds faster than the speed of sound. This was to see if they could make a prop plane fly as fast as a jet, but with the instant power surge of a propeller plane. Republic Aviation was given the contract to build the airplane, which they did by modifying two F-84 Thunderstreets. Several manufacturers were asked to send propellers and designs to spin at supersonic speeds. The new engine was an Allison T-40 turboprop engine. Allison had already been experimenting with the turboprop design, but it was far from being perfected. The T-40 was basically two T-38s built into a single engine case that was specifically designed for this project. Allison even stated that the engine was a monstrosity, a mechanical nightmare. The J-35 engine normally powering the F-84 was removed from the airframe and the T-40 was installed. The T-40 was the most powerful aircraft engine on the planet when it was built. It produced 5,850 horsepower. The engine spun two massive drive shafts which ran along either side of the cockpit up to the nose where it was connected to a transmission box. To strengthen the drive shafts, multiple bearing blocks were placed along their length, each with a temperature sender to make sure that it didn't overheat. Getting the engine fired up and synchronized was a pretty long and complicated process, which took almost half an hour. Once fired, the engine ran the same RPM all the time. The speed of the plane was adjusted by varying the pitch of the propeller. The propeller had so much bite at full pitch that it actually tried to spin the aircraft around it instead of just spinning the propeller. This caused massive amounts of vibration and instability and usually resulted in the pilot abandoning the test flight. The two drive shafts had such bad vibration problems that the head engineers over the project gave the test pilots the green light to eject if they ever felt that there was something going wrong with either of them. The plane even had an afterburner. It is still the only turboprop to ever have been outfitted with one. But it was never used in an actual test flight due to the plane already having so many issues to overcome. The test crew didn't want to add more things to that list. The two test planes were finally grounded as the project was cancelled, while only having 10 total flight hours. Not because anyone was killed or injured, however, the Thunder Screech had a serious issue, one that could not be overcome with more testing. When the plane was fired up, the propeller tips were spinning at over 900 miles per hour, which is Mach 1.18. This caused a constant sonic boom to be emitted from the propeller tips. This issue was discovered at Edwards Air Force Base when the plane was being tested. During one taxiing incident, a C-47 was parked nearby the Thunder Screech when they started the plane's engine. Immediately, the painfully loud propeller began emitting a sonic boom shockwaves. Inside of the C-47 parked nearby, the crew chief of the plane was busy sweeping it out. The sonic booms were emitted radially from the propeller tips and struck the crew chief inside of the C-47, causing him to have a seizure. This was hardly the only incident that involved the physical reactions to the propeller shockwaves. Many crew members involved with the testing of the airplane recalled vomiting when the plane was started up near them. There are other crew members that said men were knocked off of their feet when the plane taxied past them while standing nearby. During test flights, the plane was so loud that pretty much anyone even remotely near Edwards Air Force Base complained. Homes at the base shook and vibrated constantly while the plane was in flight. It wasn't a simple boom and then silence again as with most sonic booms. It was a constant drone of ear-splitting, glass-shattering noise. One of the test pilots even remembered on his days off, he could clearly hear the plane at his home, over 22 miles from where it was being flown that day. During takeoff, the plane vibrated the control tower at the airfield so badly that the radios had to be put on top of folded blankets to keep them from vibrating around. At one point, they were afraid the windows of the tower were going to break from being so violently buffeted by the shockwaves. The plane was eventually not allowed to operate from the main airfield at the base due to the noise it created. It was even rumored to have caused several miscarriages, but this has never been proven or disproven. The project was such a nuisance at the base that almost every single officer and enlisted person was vocally against it. 
Both the Navy and the Air Force quickly backed away from the concept after seeing the huge issues with sound. Republic was left testing the plane by themselves and soon after canceled the project. One of the two experimental airplanes still survives to this day. The second one was scrapped. The plane originally was a gate guard display aircraft at Meadows Field near Bakersfield, California for over 20 years before it was finally moved to the U.S. Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio, where it was fully restored and put on display in its experimental aircraft hangar. It is often said that the Thunder Screech was the fastest prop plane in history, which is untrue. The plane never flew faster than 450 miles per hour. The Soviet Tupolev Tu-95 Bear Bomber is actually the plane that holds the highest continuous speed record for a prop aircraft at 545 miles per hour.